Hello everyone, it's Retroaction. Welcome back to our Transformers review. This is the Transformers The Definitive G1 Collection, Part 1. And we are here with Volume 6, to Target 2006. Of course, the start of a groundbreaking series of Marvel UK. A series of original strips. I just changed the continuity of the Transformers Marvel UK comic forever and was the first of, a, of many groundbreaking changes. And here we have it. And storylines. This is one of the original issues from 1986. This one's dated 20th, 20th of September 1986. Comes with a free poster. And so we've got Galvatron Ultra Magnus and their toy. Well, he doesn't really look like the toy Galvatron, but there you go. We've got the new leaders. So we're advertising the new leaders on the back. We've got an advertisement for the new leaders. The Battle of the Giants. Galvatron is purple for some reason and grey. He's pink and grey here. Interesting. And we've got Ultra Magnus. There you go, Transformers. They're in the shops now. That sort of thing. That's broke. So this is actually part one in here. But of course I have the Defensive Team Collection reprint. Got the transformation page, which is a staple of the UK comic. Which is quite cool. There's even a free poster inside, which we can get to as well. Oh. This way. Mm, okay. Just a bit of a nightmare carrying this. I'm picking this up. Thanks, so you've got Ultra Magnus there and Ultrabot logo. Yep, so that is the comic. That's the free poster. Very nice. Looks like we've only got half the Transformers logo there. So it's also, next issue must have come with another poster. Or the next part of the poster. Yeah, Galvatron or something. Yeah, it's a nice artwork there, it's quite cool. Yep, so there it is. There it is. And we've got green grounds, backup strip. And next week, we've got a bit of a spoiler for what's coming up in the storyline. That's quite cool. There it is, so that's issue 79. Right, so here we go. So we've got Megatron on the cover, got the Transformers, the Defensive Dune Collection. We have Rack and Ruin, and I think it's Impacto, it is, I believe. It's the Wreckers, anyway. On the back, we've got a quick synopsis of what's going on. The classic Marvel UK and Marvel US Generation 1 Transformers storylines represented together. Interesting enough, they've missed out the hyphen on there. Let's see on this one, we've got a hyphen. That one, there's no hyphen, so it's meant to be represented. Anyway, together in sequential volumes for the first time ever. Wit witness the era spanning and groundbreaking Target 206, a mini epic which spun out of Transformers the animated movie, or Transformers Lord the Transformers the movie, as, as it was really known, and changed the course of the UK comic forever, plus the essential US, US stories that followed it, along with new background to create, especially for the definitive G1 collection. So we've got UK 7888 and 2123 US. That's bridge, and 16. Part Works Limited. So we've got Megatron on the cover, the wreck is down the bottom there. We've got this cool spread of Galvatron and Ultra Magnus, taken from the comic. And there we go. So, this is the first of many groundbreaking stories for the US, for the UK comic. And so here we've got a quick introduction. It's saying here that originally the script said it was 2006, because of course, this is Transformers the movie did not come out here until December 1986. And the original script had 2006 as the year, but of course, as we know, it was changed to 2000. Of course, as we know, it was changed to 2005, as you see, it's mentioned there. Now we've got one of the covers from one of the issues of 2006. Basically, it's saying that even though the movie made a little, came and went up without much of a cinematic ripple for us, it changed not just something, but everything. So the UK comic has changed forever. Let's change the continuity of the UK comic forever. And this is a fantastic story we've got here. And we've got the story so far, which is quite cool. It's saying that the Orobots have had a... F it's been, yeah, it's been a two turbulent few months. The Orobots stranded on Earth. The Dinobots have departed. You've got Strax just coming in and being killed off. Well, so we think anyway. And there we have... we talked about Megatron, Shockwave, Soundwave. As a triumvirate, this conspired to that has conspired to undermine the Orbots. So there we have it. And this is of course bringing the new characters and transforms the movie. So here we go, so we've got Titan 6 here, we've got Scourge, Rodimus, 
some hot water in the cup. So this is it. So it starts, of course, with this, which is the prologue. And we've got Optimus Prime and Prowl in some sort of forest. And they're discussing some dear Grimlock and Centurion. And so we've got Optimus Prime there. And, he walks, and he's going back to the art. And then we have Cybertron, and we have the decimated ruins of the Olobot capital, which is Iocon. Which you can see there. And this is the first appearance of Impactor. But this is Enric Zalon, who appeared in a few earlier issues. And now the Olobot Resistance has had to move underground. So there you go, we've got the image of Iocon there, which is desolate, and that's how it appeared in the cartoon. It was a golden dome, it's not anymore. It's, it's the dull metal colour of, of the rest of Cybertron is now. Then we've got Impactor there, we've just got a Siege figure a few years back, a couple of years ago, that's where he is. Got him with Zell on there. Looks like we've got Shrapnel. Which is interesting. And then we've got Roadbuster that makes his appearance. And then we've got the Autobots back at the Ark, not back on Earth even. And... But all of a sudden, Optus Prime just vanishes alongside. Prowl. And who, who's the other one exactly? Prowl and Rapture, so they've just vanished. Because of course they aren't in the 1986 timeline. Because of course they don't survive Transformers movie. So there we go, got tuned there. They're all gone. What was Prowl, Rapture? Oh no, no. They have vanished. The Matrix flame flickers and burns on Cybertron. And now. In the present, of course, where we are at the moment, in the storyline, this is happening in 1986. From the future, arrives this Decepticon. So it says here, Well, elsewhere on Earth, the late afternoon stillness of an Oregon cereal farm is rent asunder, heralding a revival. Heralding a revival. Is this it? Are we where we want to be? Yes, yes, I believe we are. However, a more relevant question would be, are we when we want to be? Kind of confusing this mess, this business, eh? It looks as though the jump throwed up local weather conditions. So we've got these Decepticons that have arrived. And these people, these travellers, don't know what's going on. Yeah, it's 1986. Perfect. And it is, in fact, Galvatron, Scourge and Cyclonus from the future, which is now in... The present timeline. Yeah, see, there he is. So Galvatron has made his arrival. And they're in their toy colours, which is quite cool. And now we open up with Target 2006 Part 1. So that's the end of the prologue. We've got Cyclonus and Scourge. Well, oddly enough, both are blue, instead of one being purple and one being blue. They attack this train, they're flying off, causing hell, causing chaos. And then, let's see, we've got Scourge taking out some people there. And we've got Galvatron transforming. And he says, Galvatron rules here, and Galvatron will decide on our course of action. If I have allowed you to test your new forms, let us now not survival to Megatron. So Galvatron's going to meet up with, of course, his former self, Megatron. And then we've got the robots just disappearing again. They're reminiscing about that. And we've got Megatron talking to the Constructicons. And out of nowhere, Galvatron, Cyclonus, and Scourge arrives. From Scourge, Cyclonus, and myself, Galvatron. Soundwave, scanning Commander Megatron, so Soundwave is discussing what is going on. Hmm, so their names and forms are unfamiliar to me. A surface scan of their minds validates their claim. However, some force prevents my probing any further. So Galvatron meets Megatron, and they're discussing. Well, obviously, Megatron can't understand where Galvatron has come from. So, discussing stuff. Megatron cannot die, of course, because he will become Galvatron. And now, now where they start in the battle. And then we've got Laser Beak that turns up. And we've got the Constructicons, we've got Ironhide and Jazz. And then back on Cybertron, we've got Emerald Zowan and the Autobot Resistance with Impactor. And some of these other guys, which I don't know if they've got any names, but they look quite cool. And of course, they have found Ultra Magnus. And Ultra Magnus is now going to Earth. So here we go. We are now continuing the story, so 
this little scourge leading some sort of construction of some sort of device made by the constructicles. And now we're at Target 2006, part two. And we've got this giant device that's going to cause destruction. And now we have Ultra Magnus now being teleported back to 1986. Well, to teleport to Earth. And in fact, we're discussing the mission and stuff. So Clonus taking on Ultra Magnus. Just realised this is not working very successfully. Is it? Um, yeah. And then, so we've got that going on there. A bit better. So we've got Gal uh, we've got Jetfire and Ultra Magnus discussing. And we've got Galvatron going after Jazz. And now Galvatron has was telling you all about all about I'm gravely disappointed you come and visit me unannounced and then to add insult to injury you leave something behind you. No feel free to pop around and pick him up anytime. Ha, 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 ha. So now Galvatron has captured Jazz. Right, and now he's stepped on Ironhide. And so we've got Jetfire discussing things with. Obviously, they're trying to find a way to get Jazz back. And then so there you have it. And then we've got. Ultra Magnus. Get it, lad. Let's go. Our comrades are waiting. And then we've got Mirage. But they get. It. They're getting ambushed by Cyclonus and Scourge. So we've got Cyclonus and Scourge uh, knocking up Bumblebee, Ironhide, and over there. And we've got Jack Fire coming in. And then, of course, we've got some sort of disaster going on there. There's some sort of explosion that's just happened. We've got Jack Fire taking up the Decepticons. Well, so And we've got Galvatron being. Well, he's impenetrable and can't be attacked. And he just steps on him and he's hopeless. And now they find the battered men, they find the battered bodies of Sandwave and Megatron. And then sometimes it's not the major events that turn the time of battle. Yeah. There we have it, so the bad is about to happen there. We've got a fact file on Ultra Magnus, which is quite cool. And now we've got Wreck and Roll, this is part four, we've got the Wreckers. Got Rack and Ruin, Impactor, and Top Spin showing up. And they're taking out Shrapnel there, they're blowing him to pieces. We've got Whirl here coming in. And Rack and Ruin is taking out Dirt, taking out Frostbox, and dismembering his Decepticons. We've got Impactor there making his stand. And they're all assembling and ready to take out these Decepticons. And they come across this, this guy here who's doing. Trying to blow up, we've got Road Buster there and Twin Twist. And we've got Impactor and Emirate Zell discussing things while taking up this monster. And now the Wreckers are ready, so there we go. So now we've got Transformers again. And we have Megatron, who's back, causing disaster. And Megatron. Has placed allegiance to Galvatron, but they've teamed up. And there's a timer about to go off. Mick and Ultra Magnus is discussing that he has a mission to accomplish. So there we have it. Keeps going on. Now we've got Jet Fire, Iron Eye, Hound, Smokescreen, and Hoist taking it. So the set that comes. Megatron comes in. Jazz here, who's finally figured it out. You 
just like him, aren't you? You're just like Megatron. Ha, huh? no jazz, not like Megatron. I am Megatron. And now we've got the revelation that Galvatron is Megatron. And we've got Cybertron the Mill Years, which is quite cool because this is basically just talking about what has happened since Optimus Prime left Cybertron. The Orbot Army has fell into disarray. The Council of Orbot led Elders, led by High Councillor Tracon, tried to bond their remaining soldiers together once more. It was the Decepticons, also a benefit of the High Command, who took the initiative. A young, ambitious, ambitious warlord named Trannis seized control of the Decepticon Army. So Trannis began to undo all the work Optimus Prime has done. City states that he then liberated fell in quick succession to a vicious and concerted campaign of terror. Back to a brutal force, and the Autobot army has become scattered. And eventually, he decided that Iacon wasn't worth capturing, and he decided to level the city, almost leveling it in the process. And now we've got Emirate Zawan fleeing Iacon through disused uh, utility ducks, and he has now decided to, rab well, to rally an Autobot resistance. There we have it. So that's quite cool. We've got a nice picture of Sarge on there. So we've got Emery Zalon, still on Cybertron. And he has been found by Broadside, Springer and Sandstorm. And they're having some sort of battle. Oh, there's some Pacta, sorry. Pacta. Fighting them for some reason. And we got the giant mass, destru mass destruction device of Galvatrons. And Unicron. And this is basically the origin of Galvatron. Which is, of course, as told in Transformers the movie. He, Starscream knocks him out into space. He is found by Unicron and converted and reformatted as Galvatron. Reformatted into Galvatron. So there we have it. And so now Galvatron is there. And we now have Shockwave coming into the fight. Entering the fight. And there we have it. And then, again from the future, three more Autobots have turned up. And this, and this is Cut, Blur, and. So that was Blur, not Sketch, at the very start. That was Cut, Blur, and Rodden, and Hot One. And now, the Autobots from the future are going to take out the Decepticons from the future. So there we have it, we've got the Nemesis. Well, well not, it was not known as Nemesis then, but that's what it's known as now. And it gets, and it's got destroyed, obviously. So it says, it floats through the void like some bloated predator lying the fragile planet below with a hunter's keen glaze. Gaze. It waits patiently for a sign, a signal from its master. It has been waiting four million years, screened from unwanted attention by sophisticated shields. And now, for the Decepticon Starship, the waiting is over. Magnificent! The power of this planet's sun, magnified in a thousandfold, magnified a thousandfold, stored and then released a single beam of pure destructive force. I think we can call this little test a success. As soon as it has recharged, we can return to our own time. So he's going to use his own device to return to his own time. And we've got Starscream taking off there. We've got Ultra Magnus now talking with Cup and Hot Rod. It looks like they're all going to team up. And we've got Megatron and Galvatron attacking each other. But they can't. Megatron can't be killed, obviously, because he is Galvatron. Because he becomes Galvatron. And it looks like they're all taking each other out there. We've got a cup, Hot Rod, and Ultra Magnus coming together. Time's just bit the dust there. We've got Starscream taking out Jazz. We've got Wheeljack that comes in. And Galvatron has just thrashed Starscream. And now we have Galvatron up against Ultra Magnus. And we've got Megatron and Starscream down, and now we've got Ultra Magnus being ripped. Well, Ultra Magnus's cab has been ripped open by Galvatron, who's just smashed the window there, as you can see, and he's climbed onto it. He's, well, he's thrown himself onto him, and now, yeah, now of course, Ultra Magnus has taken off down the road, and we've got, and he's just thrown Galvatron off there. And now we've got his time device, which I, I don't know if they, I don't know if they gave this device a name. I forget what the, forget the name of the device now. Hang on a minute, I'm going to quickly find it. It might be, might be in it in the end somewhere. It might be one of these other issues. I 
I've got, and I can't remember what they do, what they call that device. And obviously, has the power to take Galvatron back to the future. And then we've got Galvatron taking on Ultra Magnus there, he's transformed to his laser cannon mode. They're having a brutal battle. And Ultra Magnus has just suffered a blow to Galvatron there. But Galvatron's back up, because he is quite unstoppable. And now we've got Galvatron aiming his cannon at Ultra Magnus, but Ultra Magnus drives off. He gets blasted and up, and the whole thing goes up. And the victor is Galvatron. For long moments, the inferno rages un unabated, punctuated occasionally by smaller explosions as other construction vehicles surrender to its molten embrace. Until at last, a victor emerges from the conflagration. It and it is Galvatron. Next, back to the future. And we've got a cool uh, interface on Galvatron. Introducing the new leaders. And this finally reveals that he is in fact Megatron. There we go. There it is. So there's our fact file on Galvatron. We've got the device again. To it. Now we've got Ultra Magnus having been defeated by Galvatron. It's a fantastic issue we've got going here. This confrontation is awesome. Um, it's, a, it's a great comic. And we've got the whole thing with the Matrix flame again. Everything was going according to plan until Optimus Prime disappeared. With him went the sacred life force of the Transformer race, the creation Matrix. Despite Volcano's importance, our leader on Cybertron Emirates now on sent me to Earth. With a mission to locate Prime and the Matrix and the time limit, 120 hours before Volcano's commencement. So that is why Ultra Magnus is on Earth. And Ultra Magnus is just attacking Galvatron once again. But the whole device has just been detonated and it completely blows up. And now Starscream is facing Galvatron. And he just gets completely torn apart. Starscream is completely being destroyed. And now, according to this, this is only just a small setback for Galvatron. He knows he has all the time in the world. And nearby, three future Autobots wonder what to do with the real Starscream. Because that's a fake Starscream that's just been blown up. There we have it. So now we have the aftermath. So the, the device has been destroyed. We have yet again a retelling of what's going on with Unicron. So Unicron cannot be destroyed. So obviously, he wants to destroy Unicron and take control of the universe himself. The Autobots are unable to stop him, but they have blown up his device. The Operation Volcano, well, I think is over now, time is running out. Then we've got Impactor there, talking to Roadbuster. What about Ultra Magnus? Doesn't his absence point to the failure of Volcano? Even with Spring of Sandstorm and Broadsides that will augment our strength, we're liable to be overcome by sheer weight of numbers. So Operation Volcano is looking a disaster. I believe it's Operation Volcano. Yeah, it is Operation Volcano. And so we got Megatron there. Moves back up. And looks like Megatron is attacking Ultra Magnus. And there we have Well and Impactor. Impact has just been destroyed. And he's now been shot down by this Decepticon here. It looks like that is it. Impact is bitten dust. Oh no, not you, my friend, not you. Check it out. Can it? Zalon. He always knew that my death was a possibility. Springer is. Uh, 
Wait, let's take it. You are the one that has to live. You will survive without me. Okay, uh, the pactor has been destroyed. However, back on Earth, Optus Prime has returned. When did he return? Did we, did we miss that? When did Optus Prime come back? That's the question. He also came back and didn't see him come back. Optus Prime's obviously just returned. The art went to some ups on the enemy, so Optus Prime's returned. Obviously, Jazz has been repaired. But Corn Trim, the All of Us will prevail. And that is it. That is the end of Target 2006. That was an epic storyline. We saw, the, we, we saw the, the arrival of Galvatron, Cyclonus, and Scourge. And also the arrival of Unicron. We've got this epic confrontation. Between Galvatron and Ultra Magnus, we've got all the old, all the old order bots being outnumbered. And that was pretty cool. It was a fantastic storyline, and it paved the way for all the great stories to come. You know, once a Galvatron, once a Galvatron dead alive, and the legacy of Unicron. I know that story so far, and Time Wars as well. And we've got Aerobots over America, which is the US. I don't like the US that way. And so we've got the Aerobots, Megatron, Bombshell. I think Bombshell's using the Cerebro chips. Cerebro chips. And, uh, yeah, the area bots are making an appearance by looks of it. And we've got Galvat uh, Megatron being held by human there. The space bridge is coming in. We've got Dirge and Frost. We've got Superion that's just been formed, obviously, by the aerial bots. And that is it for that. And now we've got this strange issue. It's heavy traffic. And this has been bugged by the human skin. Um, we've just got Skids there, who's making his appearance, and Motor Master, so we've got the Stunticons in. Got Circuit Faker coming to the battle. Um, we've got Superion versus Menasaur, which is quite cool. Right, so there we go. And looks like they've just destroyed that car there. And these humans are obviously staying out of the battle. Until the Circuit Faker gets saved, and then we've got the Septicon Graffiti. The Decepticon is messing up the Tower of Liberty, the Statue of Liberty, even the Tower of Liberty. Then we've got the Stunticons again, all gone about, all gone about even, so it's the Battle Chargers. And basically, these humans doing something. We've got one about, no, that's one of Muck game. We've got one of Muck there, messing up around, and, and yep, yeah, the left side of the paint, who, the left side of the paint on the Statue of Liberty, so humans are wimps. And that's about it. And there we have it. So we've got the cover gallery. So we've got Transverse UK 78, 79, 80, 79 is the one I showed you at the very start. We've got 81, 82, 84, 84, 84. And so, all, different, all different things there. And now we have the UK poster for Transforms the movie. And it still lasts from December 12th. Interesting enough, it's the US like date there, it's 12th of December, isn't it? From the UK, yeah. yeah. Transfers movie, Beyond Good, Beyond Evil, Beyond the Wildest Imagination. That's right, you cannot be underestimated the impact it had, even though it was a fail, really. I mean, Optus Prime died and everyone cried, that sort of thing. Uh, film 2006 with Grimlock, with Greg Berger, even. Uh, I think it's Greg Berger, isn't it? And we've got the Meet the Records. We've got Impacto, Roadbuster, Well, Broadside, Springer, Sandstorm, Wreck and Ruin, Top Spin, Twin Twist. And then we've got Meanwhile, the Officers of Marvel UK. This is basically discussing allocate the largest box of space yet for the UK originated story. The four part in the National Interest storyline moved directly into the 11 part Target 2006. A story designed to feed in and out of the movie and bring Galvatron, Ultra Magnus, and other key future characters like Cyclonus, Scourge, Hotwell, and Cup into the main continuity. A move the US comic was gratefully sidestepping. Writer Simon Furman, scouring a less than final draft of the movie script, found a brief instant where Galvatron orders his troops to Earth, slotting his whole time travel saga into that brief, ambiguous instant of screen time. There we go. The arrival of Transformers movie brought with it for the first time the streamlined animated character turnaround sheets, which meant the UK artists who up to this point had drawn the characters based largely on the toys and back up 
could now bring a freer hand to the way the Countess moved and interacted on the page. Sadly, the turnaround sheets didn't arrive in time for the first part of Titanic 2006, when the difference between it and the subsequent official part one can be clearly seen, particularly in the look of Galvatron. Yeah, so they used it to version for the start. And then we got creative spot up Jeff Seaman, one of the Transformers artists. It's really the crest of the wave in terms of both Transformers UK and and Marvel UK, but in some ways the best was yet to come. And there we are, and that will probably be materialising in the next three parts. Right, this has been Retroaction with Transformers, the Avengers of G1 Collection, Target 2006. One of my favourite storylines, it's a pretty epic storyline. Pactor, of course, is a fan favourite character, he just got his own figure for Siege back in 2020. And I do have that figure boxed, I haven't opened it, but it was a fan voted one. And it's not a great figure, really, I mean, the, the ultimate's a bit rubbish, but. It does look quite close actually to how he appeared in this story. And I knew about the story before getting the figure, so that's why I got the figure. And yeah, very cool that they finally made him. It's it finally very cool that Hasbro finally made a toy of Impactor. Unfortunately, he did die at the end of it, but it does get brought back as a zombie, I believe, in the later UK story. So there we go. But he did meet his demise. And, but this is a pretty epic shot here of Galvatron. Touching on to uh, Ultra Magnus. Um, yeah, but... Yeah, get the idea. UK artwork's definitely much better than the US, uh, that's for sure. And Turn 2006 is such a fantastic story. And it's groundbreaking that it led to all the good stories to come. And there's a factor there getting destroyed, but we've still got a figure after all these years. So that's quite cool. And, Yep, the legacy of Time Turn 6 continues. Right, this has been Retroaction. I'll be back with Galvatron once it did all right. See you then. Bye.